Hello guys, so we are going to continue with the third video for this chapter where we are going to show you some examples of how to come, uh, apply the, the equations that I've showed to you in the previous videos. Okay, so first question, calculate the pH of 0 0.01 mole of sulfuric acid. So first of all, you know, have to know that 1 mole of sulfuric acid gives 2 mole of H+. Uh, the equation is given of a H2SO4 uh, to dissociate to become 2H+. Plus plus. SO4 to minus. Okay, so um, from here we know that the ratio is 1 to 2, so it's 0 0.01. So, amount of concentration of H plus is 2 times 0 0.01, which is 0 0.02. So, negative log your calculations, then you get your answer as 1.7. Second question is calculate the pH of 0 0.01 of ethanoic acid. So, for ethanoic acid, so you use the formula delta H is equal to square root of K8 over time C. Or you substitute 1.8 times 10 power negative 5 and 0 0.010. So you have 4.24 times 10 power of negative 4 per mole per decimal cube. Negative log your answer, you should get your pH is 3.37. Third question calculate the pH for 2.0 times 10 power negative 8 mole per, uh, mole per decimal cube of hydrochloric acid. Now note that this is a very dilute hydrochloric acid. So in here we have to take into consideration for water dissociation of the acid from the water too. So since concentration of acid is less than 1, point, uh, 1 times 10 power negative 7, so water dissociation con concentration should also be considered. So water dissociate to give H plus which is equal to OH minus which is equal to 1 times 7 10 power negative 7. So H plus is 1 times 10 power negative 7 plus 2 times 10 power negative 8. So you have 1.2 times 10 power negative 7. So pH is equal to negative log. 1.2 and 10 power negative 7, so you have pH is equal to 6.92. So this is the method of how to calculate for a pH of for a very dilute acid. Number 4, calculate the pH of 0.01 mole per decimeter cube of ammonia, given that your pKb is 4.7, so you use um, you empty lock the pKb to get the Kb which is 2.0 times 10 power negative 5, so you use uh, OH is equal to square root of Kb times C, or you substitute 2.0 times 10 power negative 5 to 0 0.1, so press your calculator, you get 4.47 times 10 power negative 4, so negative lock of OH minus, you get uh, negative lock 4.47 times 10 negative 4, you get 3.35. So we use the equation pH is equal to 14 minus 3.35, we get 10.65. Number 5. Calculate the concentration of H plus in 0 0.20 HCN to the value of pK for HCN is 9.3 times 10, uh, 9.3. So you anti lock your Ka first, so you get uh, 5.01 times 10 power negative 10. Then you apply the formula, delta H is equal to square root of Ka times C. So you square root everything. Okay, so finally you get your answer as 1.0 times 10, 10 power of negative 5. 6. A 1.0 0 0.10 of alkaline solution produce a weak base has a pH 9.1. A. Okay, calculate the concentration of OH minus. So you have to count, uh, use the POH equals to 40 minus pH to get the POH first. Then from the POH you negative you empty lock the POH. So you get 1.26 times 10 power negative 5. So given the this is the concentration, so how to calculate degree of dissociation. So degree of dissociation alpha is OH minus times C. So OH minus you can get from A in here. So you just substitute 1.26 times 10 power negative 5 divided by 0 0.10. You get 1.26 times 10 power negative 4. Seven examples. At 298k, 0.200 nitrous acid is 1.5% dissociated. A. Calculate the value of pKa. So you use, uh, since it is 1.5% ionized, so alpha is 0 0.015. So you have C. So you use uh, Ka is equal to C alpha square. So 0 0.200 times 0 0.015. So you get 4.5 times 10 more negative 5. So B, degree of dissociation of 0 0.5 mole. Since Ka will be the same, so you're going to make use of the Ka in here to calculate. So um, 4.50 times 10 power negative 5 is equal to 0 0.05 is times alpha square. So uh, alpha is equal to 9.49 times 10 power negative 3. So this is how we calculate for 7. Number 8, an aqueous solution of 1.0 dimethyl amine produce OH minus concentration at 4.7. Calculate A, dissociation concept of base, and B, degree of dissociation of the base. So you have um, KV is equals to concentration of OH minus square times C. So you get uh, 4.737 times m negative 7 square over 0 0.010, you get 1.9 times m negative 11. 
So the degree of dissociation alpha is square root uh, of h times c. So 4.37 times 10 power negative 7 divided by 0 plus 0, 1. You get 4.37 times 10 power negative 5. So that I have for you the examples for all the applications that I can apply. Of course, there are more you can try on your own. Next, we're going to have a look at titration indicator for acid base. So an indicator is a water-soluble dye that changes color accordingly to the concentration of hydrogen ion. So for example, Lima's paper is a weak organic acid which is represented by the formula HIN. So when it is HIN, it is showing red color. While it's conjugate base IN minus, it is showing blue color. So according to Lee Chat, we have we can apply Lee Chatelier principles in here. So if you have if you increase if you if the solution is acidic, it means H3O plus will be high. So if concentration of H3O will be high, so according to Lee Chatelier principle, equilibrium will shift to the left. So when equilibrium shift to the left, you see more of the uh, red color. So that is why the color of the paper change from blue to red. Conversely, if the concentration of is a solution is a basic solution, so the OH minus will react with the H3O plus to form water. So concentration of H3O plus will decrease. So the concentration of H3O plus decrease, equilibrium will shift to the right. So when equilibrium shift to the right, that is why you see in alkali solution, uh, litmus paper is blue in color. So uh, the equilibrium constant for equation above is called as indicate, uh, indicator dissociation constant which can be derived from the equations of the KHIN. So at the end of the day, you just know that your in, uh, pH that is suitable for the indicator is determined by uh, pKIN minus log HIN over IN minus. So if the concentration of the acid over the conjugate base is greater than 10, so you will see acid indicator color. If the, uh, if the concentration of the acid over the conjugate base is lesser than 10 by negative 10, so you see the conjugate base color. So there are a lot of, uh, there are a few uh, indicators which is frequently used in laboratory. We have methyl orange, monotimo group, and also phenol line. So each of the acid base color give a different um, color. However, there is a chances for see the color in between the acid base, which is the neutral color, especially when it intersect the end point. So uh, if your end point is somewhere between 3.1 to 4.4, so you'll, you'll get to see the neutral color of metal orange, which is the orange color. If the end point is somewhere between 6.0 to 7.6, so you'll see the neutral color, which is a green, green color. And finally, if your end point is somewhere around 8.0 to 9.8, so you get to see a light pink color. So titration curve are graphed to show how pH of an acid base changes as it is being neutralized. So the curve is usually obtained as a place, uh, place as a glass electrode field in the titration flask and recording the pH of the alkaline runs in. So uh, this whole thing here is what we call as the end point. Okay. So the end point is referring to the point that which the equals amount of H3O plus and OH minus in the titration flask. So end point can change by telling the note, noting the color changes of acid base indicator as in the neutral color. So during end point, all acid has been neutralized by alkaline. The solution of a conical flask contained only salt and water. Color of the indicator will be the middle way or the, in between the color of acid and its conjugate base, and the average of point of average of endpoint, which is known as the equilibrium point, is often used to identify either the salt form is acidic, basic, or neutral. So let's have a look at the strong acid and strong base titration curve. So this strong acid strong base titration curve is generated when you when we titrated a 0.1 mole per decimeter cube of HCl, 25 ml. Then our titri will be. Uh, 0.10 or more per decimeter cube of NaOH. So you can see here, uh, because we use this uh, strong acid HCl, so our pH is going to start at 1 because our uh, pH is equal to negative log of the concentration of H. Plus. So straight away substituted here, you get this answer in here. Okay, so now uh, note that the endpoint for this reaction is somewhere at the 25 degrees, so uh, 25 ml. So this is the endpoint for the uh, strong acid, strong base titration. So not that there is a range, and the equivalent point is somewhere in between here. So this point is what we call at uh, this point is what we call as the equivalent point. Okay. So uh, which shows that uh, 
strong hydration between strong acid and strong base usually produces a neutral salt. Okay, so now um, what are the suitable, suitable indicators that can be used to tell the strong acid, strong base hydration? So this is the effective pH range for methyl orange, effective pH range for bromotimo blue, and the effective pH range for the phenol line. So it seems that all of them intersect the endpoint for the uh, indicator, which means that both all three indicator, methyl orange, bromotimo blue, and phenol line, are suitable to be used as the indicator for strong acid and strong base titrations. So here are how we're going to quantitatively calculate the pH of a solution when it reaches the certain titrate value. So 25 cm3 or 0.1 HCl is titrated at 0.1 mole of NaOH. So the pH of the solution increase. Calculate the pH of the solution after the volume of NaOH has been added at first 24.9 cm3. So you have to use the equation NaOH plus HCl give NaCl plus H2O. So you use the mole concept to calculate this. So using MV over 1000 to get the mole of H plus. So 0.100 to 25 to 1.0 to press your calculator you get 0.0025 mole whereas in NaOH uh, you have 0.01 of NaOH and the volume of 24.9 so you get your volume uh, mole is 0.0249 so uh, mole uh, since in here uh, we have lesser base so acid is going to be excess so we have to calculate the mole of excess of acid because that will be the uh, one that will determine what is our pH of the solutions so mole of excess H plus will be 0 0.0025 minus 0 0.00249. So you get uh, 0 0.0001 or simply 1.0 times 10 power negative 5. So uh, not, we cannot yet calculate because we have to change the concentration first. So concentration of H plus is equal to 0 times 1000 over V total. So 0 0.001 substitute by 1000 over the total volume of the acid plus base. So you have 24.9 plus 25. So press the calculator, H plus is 2.0 times 10 power negative 4 mole per decimeter cube. So pH is equal to negative log 2.0 times 10 power negative 4. So therefore pH is 3.70. So this is for how we calculate at the volume 24.9 cm3. So not that it is still in the acidic range. Whereas if we calculate at the pH uh, at the volume of 29 5.10, so your mole of NaOH plus HCl give NaCl plus H2O. So mole of H plus as usual you get 0 0.025, but the mole of the OH minus now is 0 0.002251. So it seems that this time it is not the H plus in excess. So it is the OH minus is in excess. So when OH minus is in excess, we have to calculate the mole of NaOH in excess. So the mole of OH minus is in excess is also 0 0.00. 0001. So at this moment we cannot yet calculate the uh, concentration because we need to calculate the concentration of OH minus. So concentration of OH minus still the same formula, mole times 1000 over V total. So you get 0 0.0001 times 1000 over 25.1 plus 25. So press your calculator, you get 1.996 times 10 power negative 4. So you first calculate your POH by negative log 8. So negative log 1.96 times 10 power negative 4, you get 3.70. And when your pH is equal to 14 minus 3.70, you get 10.3. So this is how we quantitatively calculated the volume of the solution at before and after the endpoints. Okay, so hopefully you can be able to understand. So see you in the next video. Thank you.